Now, if you were designing a synthesizer, you may think to yourself, I should make it practical or I should make it affordable or I should follow the current trends in music technology. Or you may think, you know what, you only live once. We should do something absolutely ridiculous. Now, Analog Solutions describes Colossus as a once in a generation synthesizer. And I don't think that's necessarily marketing hubris, just simply because it requires quite a number of factors, one of which is lunacy, to even pull something like this off. And the story goes that Tom at Analog Solutions thought if I sell a few of these, I can cover off the lion's share of my development costs and it's a good story to tell the grandkids. But at the time of recording, uh, he's already shifted over 60 of these. And whilst he's unlikely to sell thousands, he's already sold twice as many as they did EMS Synthy 100s, which is the instrument that directly influenced it. So as mentioned, the direct inspiration for the Colossus is the EMS Synthy 100. Uh, and the story goes that Tom uh, found a Synthy 100, and he can tell you a funny story about having to get it over a wall. Uh, and he spent a lot of time and energy uh, repairing and restoring it. And he got it a lot of the way there, but it still needed a fair bit of work. And he thought, do you know what? Uh, it would be better if I sold this on to someone else who can see the job through. Uh, and I could make a new kind of Synthy 100 for, for the modern world. And he was able to do that because he's been building synthesizers for the last two decades. And I'm sure you're familiar with many of them. Right, whistle stop tour. Let's start with the oscillators. You've got 12, because why not? So you've got, you know, your waveforms, your pulse width. There's pulse width modulation is possible. Some of them output sub oscillators as well. Uh, and they've got these really cool retro tuning knobs. Um, and you can use them for audio or you can use them as LFOs. And a really nice touch is they each have an attenuator so you can control the output level. Very handy when using them for modulation. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got a couple of noise generators with color, got a random voltage generator and a sample and hold. Next panel, you've got a full on oscilloscope, which is awesome, like the original Synthi 100 had. You've got four VCAs, although there are more, which I'll talk about in a moment. You've got two dedicated LFOs, although, as mentioned, you can use any of the oscillators as LFOs. So you've got blooming loads of them. And then you've got four envelope shapers. And these are Moog slash Oberheim style um, envelopes where the decay and release times are shared. So in the next section, we have eight filters. And these have a VCA in line, which is why I said there are more VCAs. So there's basically 12, eight of which have filters. So the first four filters are two pole state variable filters based on the Dennis P. Collin design filter that was in the ARP 2500 and the Oberheim SEM.
And the second bank of filters, these four here, are Moog style ladder filters, four pole, resonant low pass. You've then got four envelope shapers, and these are ADSR, but these can self-trigger and can self-loop, which is awesome because you can fire them all off at different speeds with the LFOs as well, use them to trigger things and have the Colossus play itself, which is awesome. You then have two spring reverbs, two ring modulators, and some slew limiters. In the final section, we have four signal meters, which is super retro and super cool. And then we have a full on sequencer. So this is 64 steps and you can set it up in different ways, have it parallel or have it as one long sequence. And you've got all your controls here and you can clock it, etc. Put your space suits and helmets on and move out. We're going to pitch the biggest ball in history and it had better be a strike. Are you sure this thing is going to work? We're going to make it work. I confess you frightened me. So coming down to the bottom, we have two of these pin matrices, which are you know, the core of the Colossus synthesizer. Uh, and you could route control signals on this one and audio signals on the other. But you still can't access everything on the synth from these pin matrices because it's just too big. So there are then a full complement of mini jack in and outputs like you'd have on any modular synth. And a nice touch is that there's all these little attenuators here so you can control signal ins and signal outs. The next panel, you've got another oscilloscope, a digital one this time, and you can put your inputs here for your X and Y, and you've got your trigger inputs as well. So I've already mentioned the other pin matrix, but we've got this final section here. So we've got a six channel mixer here and another four channel mixer here next to the master outputs. Uh, we've got the inputs for the meters. We've got some uh, ins and outs for the sequencer as well there. And we've got these joysticks, two of them. You've got ranges for the X and Y, and then you can route them to whatever you want on the synth. And then we've got two capacitive touch keyboards uh, and these can be used as keyboards, but they can also be used as little 16 step sequences as well. So let's talk about the Colossus in the room. 
At the time of uploading, this version of the Colossus is £26,500. So you'd need to save up all your paper round money to pay for that. So really, it's only going to be accessible to certain people, certain musicians and bands, studios, record labels, universities, which is akin to the way it was in the late 60s and early 70s. They made less than 100 ARP 2500s. They made 31 Synthy 100s, as I've mentioned. They probably didn't make many Moog and Buchala modulars. But yet we're still talking about those synthesizers now. And so whilst you may argue that this isn't necessary, uh, there is a place in the world for these kind of fantasy products that capture our imagination. And who knows, in 40, 50 years time, people may be hunting down legendary vintage Colossus. Colossi. Uh, an enormous thank you to Analog Solutions for the generous loan of this instrument. And of course, as ever, thank you to you for watching. Double one.